the home play, just to clarify on the home play, uh, you're going to Google. In Google, you're going to Google this title, Mr. Q's Factoring Perfect Squares and Difference of Squares. Now, um, Roman said, Mr. Q, can I also go to uh, YouTube? Or who was it? Nate? What, you, Roman? He said, could, could we also search it in, in YouTube? Yeah, you can go to my YouTube channel, search for that title. And when it comes up, you're going to take Cornell notes. And then what happens at the end of each lesson? I usually mention the home play, right? On the video, the same thing. The home play comes up at the end. So work on that home play. And the page should be mentioned in the video. Okay? Or you can go to the section 15.4 in your textbook. You read through it so that you can understand it by yourself. And then you're going to do the home play at the end. So it's an option. You can either watch my video, take notes on it, and do the home play, or you can just read and do the home play at the end. Okay? You got it? All right, good. So that brings us to a quick intro to uh, quadratic equations. Okay? So we're moving on already from expressions to equations. So a quick intro, can you get the lights out again under, please? A quick intro to, um, to quadratic equations, where they're found. So I don't know if you've seen movies where, uh, who's heard of the uh, Colosseum in Rome, oh, I have. right? Where they uh, have the gladiators, they did like, you know, they were doing, they were fighting and stuff like that. But also, um, there's amphitheaters in L.A. or anywhere, theaters that are looking something like this. You guys see them? So how does quadratic equations come into play here? Well, the mathematics part of it in designing these has to do a lot with quadratic equations. Let me show you. So here you see some performers. However, if they weren't performing, let's say somebody was here and back in the day in the uh, Colosseum, so imagine somebody here, did they have electronics back then? No. They needed to just speak and project their voice to the entire Colosseum. How do they do that if it's huge? Well, guess what? It all involves quadratics. They found out that if they placed someone at this point, that their voice reached perfectly every point in the auditorium, no matter where they were positioned, using quadratic equations. How did they do that? They figured after they graphed a quadratic equation, they started noticing that they all curved. That's where we get the curve on designs from where quadratic equations. Where else do we see it? Okay. Does it look familiar? Yeah, right? Um, some of you have dish, some of you don't, some of you have cable, but you've seen those dish, right? Also, when you drive uh, in El Centro or you drive from the freeway, Sometimes you see some antennas that look like a drum, but they are oval inside or, or like a dish, okay, which are these. Now, what does that do? So let me show you some of the, the stuff that you don't see. Let's say um, Leslie R. Leslie R. does her home play every night. And let's say hypothetically someone was not here that day and she just wanted to help that person with some of the problems on the home plate. So she takes a picture with her cell phone, right? Inside of the cell phone, the chips that come in the cell phone process information so fast inside that it, the information moves from side to side so fast that you don't even feel it. But it emanates, it creates a wave. That wave leaves the cell phone that we don't see, and it goes out into the space. 
when it goes out up in space, we have these things floating around that are known as satellites. What do satellites work? Uh, how do they work? They relay information. So here goes the signal. Leslie R. sends a picture. It hits the satellite. The satellite absorbs the signal and then sends a direct signal out going into Earth. Guess what picks up that signal? These dishes. It hits here, 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 anywhere. But when it bounces off of it, instead of bouncing back out, since it's curved, it bounces it to the center right here, 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 and here. And what happens? It's absorbed and it comes into the ground and it's sent out to the cellular companies and they send that out to the person receiving the picture in another phone. See how that works? Yeah. Not that Leslie's going to give them the answers, just the problems from the home plate. Right, Leslie? Are? Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. So that's how that's how the that works, and part of that work is done through quadratic equations. Now, this curving here and this curving over here is it has a name. It's called a parabola. That's why in the 70s, when they first came out with these dishes for the public, you know how now these dishes are not that big? They're about this size, about 18 inch, 20 inch? Yeah. Back in the 70s, they were the size of the screen if you wanted to buy one to put it in your house. Wow. Exactly. And back then, instead of calling it just a dish, they used to call it a parabolic antenna. Why do you think they call it a parabolic? Because it's curved like this. Yes? All right. Where else do we see it? Now they're using it in technology. Who's seen this? Right? They're starting to bring it into uh, to televisions because they figured, well, if it works in theaters and it works in amphitheaters and it works in antennas, well, I'm pretty sure it should work with TV. So they're curving the TV because they're saying they can get the image a little bit faster into their vision, and guess what? It becomes more vivid and more lively. That's why they're showing those kind of TVs. And what was involved? Quadratic equations, okay? Now, who's seen, uh, let me show you where it's also used. it. 
and that's what we're going to be doing today. So I hope this intro kind of like uh, brought to mind in regards to where it's used. So open up your uh, packet to the Cornell notes. Copy the objective. Our objective for today, I can solve a quadratic function by graphing. It's three together. One, two, three. I can solve a quadratic function by graphing. Copy that, please. All right. So our concept for today will be what? Quadratic functions. So we're moving on. Okay. So here we go. What are quadratic functions? You have a Fraer model already. At the bottom of the Fraer model where the uh, summary is at, I want you to copy this question. We're going to answer this before we leave. What is the solution to a quadratic function? <laughs> Write it at the summary part. What is, a so, what is the solution to a quadratic function? No, write the question and we're going to answer it before we leave, yeah. All right? So, quadratic functions. Definition, a function in Y form in which the highest power of the variable is 2. Okay? Examples, F of X equals 2X squared, copy that. Y equals 2X squared, Y equals X squared plus 2, and Y equals X squared plus 5X plus 6. Copy that and I'll elaborate right after. All right, let's see. According to the definition, the definition says, Quadratic functions have to be in Y form. Okay, let's see. Y form, Y form, Y form. This one is also in Y form, but instead of Y, what did we write? F of X to indicate that it's a function, yes? Next, the highest power is 2. Let's find out. What is the degree of this one? 1. The degree of this one? 2. What is the highest degree? 2. Degree of this one is 1, 2, 0. Highest degree is 2, and so on and so forth. Everybody hear me so far? Yes. All right, so now that clarifies what quadratic functions are. Let me show you what they are not. <laughs> y equals mx plus b, y equals x cubed plus 9, and x squared plus 5x plus 6. Copy that. As you're copying that, start thinking if these are quadratic functions, why aren't these quadratic functions? And also see if you can remember or recall the name of each of these non-examples. Copy those. I'll give you some time. All right, talk it over to your neighbor. Let them know why these are not quadratic functions. All right, I'll take a volunteer for the first one. Why is this not a quadratic function? Yes, we are. The highest degree is 1. That is correct. If the highest degree is 1, let's think back on a polynomial. The highest degree is 1. What would be the name of that? Yes. Linear. That is correct. Ian in the house. Linear function. Linear function. You guys remember that when we started with linears? Yes. Well, what is another name for this? Roman Aguirre. What is it? Slope intercept form. All right. Volunteer for the second one. Why is this not? Mia. The highest degree is. Three. So let's think polynomials. If the highest degree is 3, therefore, what would be the name of this function? Ian. Bam. Back to back, Ian. Cubic function. That is correct. Now let me show you the graph for the linear. Everybody knows those graphs. They're straight lines, yes? But look the one for the cubic. It looks something like this. It looks like the wiggle like that. 
That's the graph for the cubic. All right, and the last one. Tell your neighbor the name of this one. By now you should know what this is called. All right, let's see. Maria, what is that called? Quadratic. Jaden? It's an expression, but we gave it a specific name. Roman, Carlos. Trinomial. We just finished these, right? Okay. So let's see, Leslie R. takes a picture of this and sends it to Kelsey since she's not here. And she's going to attach a hashtag to it, what quadratic functions are. Uh, Write me some hashtags there. Nate, go. Hashtag what makes it a quadratic function? Hashtag what? Yes? Hashtag highest. Power. highest Power two. <coughs> Hashtag Stephanie Y form. And one last one. What do you guys see that all these have? that not all of these have? What needs to be there? Maria. Equal sign, which tells us we're no longer in expressions. Is that correct? All right. Good. All right. So steps, you're going to come up with those. Yay. So. Um, in the back, you should have some graph paper. Is that correct? There's three little graphs. Okay. There's one on the top right, but you have a space on the left to do work. Is that correct? Yeah. So on the top left, I want you to write example one and write solve by graphing. This is going to go pretty fast. So everybody go like this. Bear with me. <laughs> and write the, the function y equals x squared. It says solve by graphing. That means we got a graph. So, what is the first thing I need to do in order to start graphing? Leslie, C. Hint, we did it in the warm-up. Okay, what domain are we going to use? Negative 2. Negative 1. Zero, one, two, which means we need to build a table. Yay, X and Y. All right, next to it, I'm going to write it, Y equals, but instead of X, I'm going to leave a parenthesis so I can substitute values. So if I substitute negative 2 in here, what does that mean? Y equals negative 2 times negative 2, because that's to the second power, right? So what is two, negative 2 times negative 2? positive 4. Let's do that again. Parentheses, negative 1. So what is y, uh, uh, what is negative 1 squared? 1, because it's negative 1 times negative 1. What is 0 squared? 0. What is 1 squared? And what is 2 squared? Four. Okay, let's plot these points. We got negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. Okay, now to graph this, look up. We always start with a point that's farthest to the left. So look up. Remember when we did functions that I said 
Get your pencil. We're going to scan this from left to right. You guys remember that? So watch. I'm going to scan this. Tell me which is the first point that I encounter, which is negative 2 and 4. That is correct. So we're going to start here. What would be the next one after that? Negative 1, 1, and then 0, 0, and up that way. Do you guys see the parabola forming? Yes? So then let's do this. Starting here, we go this way, this way. Don't make a V. Make a little curve. And then up the other way, like so, and arrows at the end. And this is our parabola. Parabola. But what do they say? Solve by graphing. Did we graph it already? So now we need to solve it. I want you to write solution. Check this out. Look up. Let me show you the solution. Zero, zero. Okay, let's go to the second part. You have another graph, yes? Underneath that, copy this function, y equals negative x squared. All right, start graphing. What do we do? Um, Leslie C. Negative 2. Negative 1. 0. 1, 2. So our domain is that. X. We need to come up with Y. Next to it, I'm going to write Y equals negative parentheses squared. So let's see. What's our first value? Negative 2. So be careful with this one. Look up. Y equals, when there's a negative outside of parentheses, it's a what? Negative 1. Is that correct? And this means negative 2 times negative 2. So what is negative 2 times negative 2? Positive 4 times negative 1. Negative 4. Next one y equals negative 1, parentheses negative 1 squared. What does that mean? y equals negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. What is negative 1 times negative 1? 1 times negative 1, negative 1. Okay. If we substitute 0 here, what is 0 squared? Times negative 1? 0. Nate, focus. y equals negative 1 times 1 squared. What is 1 squared? Times negative 1. Negative 1. y equals negative 1 times 2 squared. What is 2 squared? Times negative 1. Negative 4. Let's follow our points. Negative 2, negative 4. Negative 1, negative 1. 0, 0. 1, negative 1. 2, negative 4. Which is the point farthest to the left? Negative 2, negative 4. What would be the next one? Negative 1, negative 1, and then 0, 0. Do you guys see the parabola? But now we're starting down here, so the roller coaster is going up. That way, that way, it curves, and it comes back down. There you go, and this is my parabola. And once again, since we're solving, we write solution. Everyone, what's our solution? Zero, zero. We're getting, we're getting the hang of this, yes? Okay, move on to the next graph. You have another graph underneath, yes? Example number three. Copy this function. Y equals X squared plus 2X. What do I do? Leslie, R. The table. Now I'm going to do a table like this. And my, my domain? Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. All right. I'm going to write this out with parentheses. Y equals parentheses squared plus two parentheses. Nate, focus. Oh, my goodness. All right, what's our first value, Nate? Negative 
negative 2. So what is negative 2 squared? Positive 4. Positive 4. What is 2 times negative 2? Negative 4. And what is 4 and negative 4? 0. 0. That is correct. Next one, uh, y equals parentheses negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1. Let's see, Nate, what is negative 1 squared? Negative 1 squared is positive 4. Positive 1. What is 2 times negative 1? Negative 2. And what is negative 2 plus 1? Negative 1. Next value, y equals 0 squared plus 2 times 0, everyone. 0, finish the other 2, plot your points. All right, when, when x is 1, what is y, everyone? 3, and when x is 2, what is y? 8. All right, let's plot those. Negative 2, 0. Negative 1, negative 1. 0, 0. 1, 3, 2, 8. What is the farthest point to the left? Negative 2, 0. What would be the next one to the right? Negative 1, 1, and then 0, 0. Do you guys see the parabola? All right, so we go like this like this, like that, and arrows at the end. That's my parabola. And then you're going to write solutions. You're like, what? Well, let me go back. Look up. This one had a solution right here. Look up. This one had a solution right there. Look at that one. That one has solutions. Talk it over to your neighbor and let them know what you think the solutions will be. Brian, give us one solution. Negative 2, 0. That is correct. Nate, give us the other solution. Zero zero. zero, zero. That is correct. Are we there? Okay. Turn the paper over. Let's go to the next graph. Copy this one. Y equals X squared plus 3X plus 2. Yeah. It's getting funner. <laughs> I'm going to Sketch a table over here. <laughs> See the table? <laughs> yes, <laughs> X, Y. We got negative 2, negative 1, 0. One, two. I'm going to help you with this one so we can go a little bit faster because we're almost let's see, we're almost done at the uh, at the end. This is a two. Sorry. So y equals parentheses squared plus three parentheses plus two. First value we substitute is negative two. What is negative two squared? Four plus. What is negative two times three? Negative six. Bring down the plus two. What is four plus two? Minus 6, 0. Okay, next. What is negative 1 squared? Positive 1 plus. What is 3 times negative 1? Negative 3. Bring down the plus 2. What is 1 plus 2? Minus 3, 0. Okay, next. What is 0 squared? 0. 3 times 0? Plus 2. What is this? 2. Last one. 1 squared? 1, 3 times 1, 3, plus 2, that is 6, and the other one is 12. All right, negative 2, 0, 
negative 1, 0, 0, 2, 1, 6, and the other one doesn't fit. Going from left to right, look up, down, back up, parabola, and solutions. Nate. And? And negative one zero. Negative one zero. Okay. So let's answer the question in your summary so that we can uh, finish. Let me help you with vocabulary. Look up. If I was to graph a straight line, look up, what would we call this if we was sketching a straight line? Everyone. Everyone. If we're gra graphing a straight line and it crosses there, what is that called? I can't hear. What is this point called when the line is graphed? Y-intercept. So if this is the y-intercept, and these are the solutions to the <coughs> function, what's another word for the solution to the quadratic function? What is the solution to the quadratic function? You guys are worried of leading, but we're not going to leave until you get this. I'm sorry? Let's find out. Are these y intercepts? Look at the solutions. What are those called? X-intercepts. So the solutions to the function are the x-intercepts. All right. So hopefully for the weekend you already know it. All right, have a good one, guys. Enjoy your three-day weekend. See you guys till Tuesday. Bye.